Well, in this live stream, I want to show you how I well, winterize my tools. Because, yeah, because I haven't been too active in here recently. I've noticed that a lot of them have started to, well, rust. Got a lot of surface rust on my tools. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to clean them up. I can't guarantee I'm going to get them all done because there's quite a few uh, uh, there. Yes. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I actually do to winterise my tools. And I'm saying I'm going to winterise them. I'm not going to say I'm not going to use them. I just need to make sure that they're not going to be, well, rusty. Yes, we don't want rusty tools. No one likes a rusty tool, no. One thing that makes all your work all orange, because obviously the rust comes off onto your, onto your workpiece, and uh, the other reason is it doesn't do them any good whatsoever. So what we'll do is we'll sharpen some tools up, so we'll show you how I do that as well, but also how we prepare the tools so they're um, protected. Yes, because it's, it's not very good when your tool's not protected. No. Ask the missus. She'll know. She'll know. Oh dear, I didn't say it, did I? I said it out loud, didn't I? Let's move it back a bit. Anyway, so what I've got here is I've got some sharpening stones here. These are diamond sharpening stones. Let's bring it back a bit further back. There you go. Uh, maybe a bit further down as well at the same time. There you go. Here we are. You can see what we're doing. We'll just loosen that. I do apologise. There you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to sharpen up our tools using diamond stones, but also... Uh, I'm going to show you how I use my all stones as well and other systems that I tend to use. Such as over here we have some sharpening um, stones over here as well and a quite simple setup. But here we've also got our diamond stones here. And these are very simple diamond stones. There's a, a 600, 400 and 300 and I've also got a 1000 grit over here as well. I've got a 4000 somewhere and I can't find it. <laughs> But that's if I'm going to put a real fine edge on that. So I'm not worried about it at the moment. I'm more worried about the fact that my tools are going rusty. Yeah, it's no good having that rusty tool. So we're going to be using a few things in the sense of this is a honing guide. Very simple little thing. Anyone can get one of these. These, these are dead cheap, these. They get like five of them. Yeah, really cheap. But um, I don't recommend them. But if you've got nothing and you're not very used to doing them by hand, one of these things are just, they're ideal. And I'll show you how to use them so you can set up easy and quickly every single time. So, um, we're going to start by having a quick peek at what we've got over here. And I can just show you what I mean. I'm having to carry the microphone with me. It's a bit nuts, isn't it? Yeah. I've got, I've got a separate stand. So over here we've got more um, Stanley Bailey planes and various other um, tools over here. But they're all starting, well, yeah, a little bit of surface rust on, which isn't too good. And then we've looked at some of these chisels. Like that. Yeah. Because I haven't been that active in my workshop. And yes, that one's pretty bad, but that is because it was left outside in the garden. Yes, I found it whilst doing some gardening. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not very helpful because if you look at this one here, for instance, you can see it's got that like, surface rust over it. That's easy to remove. That's not really a problem. But you don't want to leave it. If you leave it, you're going to end up with even bigger issues. Um, yeah, you just end up having really rusty tools. So what we're going to use is, like I said, I'm going to use my diamond stones, but I don't generally um, use them with water like a lot of people say you can because I don't like adding water to iron tools because in the, the day they're going to get even more rusty so a lot of people use something like this onto um, the diamond stones and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring myself a lot lower and get myself on a, on a chair because at the moment yeah you can't see anything because you're all the way up there I'm going to get myself lower and get that lower. I do apologise. There you go. And bring it down here like so. Okay. There is that. There is me on my chin. And first of all, I'm going to grab the microphone so you can hear me. <laughs> it's out of the screen. There you go. Um, first of all, I'm going to grab a few chisels. Um, well, I need to do something with. Not the really rusty one because that, that looks a bit kind of how to put it. Yeah, that needs some serious work. So we'll just grab a couple of tools and I'll show you what I mean. A chisel, a chisel, a chisel, and another chisel. Okay, so we've got some chisels. All right, we'll, we'll move on to the planes in a moment and I'll show you how to sharpen them and get the bevel, what have you, the correct bevel, on your tools. Because, yeah, you want better, better to repeat it, you see. Because if you don't, if you, if you don't um, have some kind of, how to put it, mech, uh, oh, muscle memory in yourself, well, the likelihood is you're going to um, create a, how to put it, 
a bit of a rounded edge on the edge of your tools and that yeah it doesn't yeah don't bode well so i've got the three diamond stones here oh hello everybody oh why is your screen i don't know let's have a look at that live chat why is it the wrong way up my chat is the wrong way up why is it the wrong way up okay why is your screen tilted Oh. Okay. Good point. Because it's not meant to be. <laughs> oh, let's have another look. It's just hurting my neck. This <laughs> is Tommy Gun. I might have to find out what's going on here. Let me have a look over here. Is my um? No, that's correct there. That makes no sense whatsoever. All right, let's bring it. See what happens if I do that, and then do that. Okay, rotate device. Yeah. That makes no sense. Why is it tilted? That's bizarre. That's a good start, isn't it? Go back to channel, report, actions. Do you do no I don't do that? That is weird. Rotate device. Okay, let's do it again. I suppose I tell you what I might do. I could do it in, in the vertical format. A bit odd though, isn't it? Why would I do that? That's bizarre. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do it that way. Around. Actually, that might actually be better actually because then you can see my hands better, can't you? All right, everybody. We are gonna be in this format instead. I do apologise. Hello uh, from Thailand. Okay, how are you doing there? Uh, that's better like that. Okay, we'll keep it vertical then. Right, I don't know why that is. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> that's odd, isn't it? Well, no, well. Oh well. Oh well. I said to me. In fact, I think that's going to be better anyway, because you can see my tools and you can see my diamond stones. All right, you can use water, like so. I don't like using water. I know people do, and I've got a good reason. The reason I don't like using water is putting water with iron tools always seems like a really bad idea. It makes things rust. Nice one's okay now, is it okay? I don't know why that is or what's going on there, but um, it isn't normally what happens when you do live on your phone. So this is my mobile, my mobile phone at the moment. It's a, that's a bit of an odd one, that is, so um, I don't get it. There you go, let's move the microphone a bit closer. Get a bit better audio. I hope the audio is okay. It's a bit awkward in there because uh, it echoes a bit in there, you see. So anyway, we've got a few tools. Chisels. Another rusty chisel. This, this one is, this is my Robert Sorby. Or one of my Robert Sorbys, and it's um, I've allowed it to get had a bit. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? So um, not great. So that's what we're going to do. We're clean them up. But also going to put an edge back on them. I'm going to do it by hand, but also going to show how I use my rig over here. This is what I use generally when I'm doing my sharpening, and I've created all these like carriages to take my tools and what have you. And I've got three stones, including the water stone at the end, and that does a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant job. We'll also be sharpening up my um. Bailey number seven there, which is one of the ones I use quite regular and probably a low angle plane. Now there's a bit of a controversy about the low angle plane in that it's actually not that much lower than an actual, you know, such as the Stanley Bailey number seven, whatever you pretty much the same. There's only a couple of degrees in it. Yeah, it's not that much lower. I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. It's also do with your bevel. Alright, alright, first of all, I'm gonna show you what I use regarding my, my lubrication. My KY jet, I'm not my KY jet. Oh my god, oh my god, I didn't say it loud. I said, oh, did, I do apologise. Alright, I tend to use engine oil just mixed with some white spirit. That's all I do. I'm not trying to lubricate something in the sense of like a bearing or something like that. Because, like, for instance, you wouldn't use WD 40 or anything like that because there's a water displacement, and that's exactly what, what um, a white spirit will do. It'd be a water displacement. So, for instance, you wouldn't use. <laughs> For, I don't know, for your bike chain, because all you do is push the oil out of the chain and, uh, and it'll rust anyway. But um, I'll just use it just to thin the oil down. So I've got some I've already mixed here earlier, and literally it just so it's a watery. It just, it's just, yeah, it's probably a lot, oh, even 50 50 is okay. But that just provides me with a lubricant when I'm actually sharpening my stones, whether I'm using my oil stone, such as the one over here in the vice, which I'll show you that as well. Uh, an oil stone like that one or whether or not I'm using my diamond 
And I know some people say, hey, yes, and oil, and you don't, you don't need to use oil, and you don't need to use water. I hate using water on iron tools. Yeah. Because that's what happens, it goes rusty. Not great. All right, so the few things you've got to bear in mind when you're sharpening your tools, one is the angle. And generally, your first, um, your primary bevel, which is your main bevel, would be around um, 25 degrees. And then your hone, on you know, the secondary bevel, um, would be 28 to 25 degrees, depending on the steel and depending on the type of chisel it is. Um, in this case, I use something. I sometimes I use one of those. You see, it's got little angles in the 25 and 30 is written on it. Or I use a gadget. And I do like a good gadget. We're going to have a good gadget occasionally, and I use a gadget like this one. These things are brilliant. Everyone in the workshop should have one of these. This is a digital angle finder. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show you that in the mo because they are really handy things to have. Um, and like I've already shown you my uh, little gauge here, got a guide, honing guide. These things are ten a penny. You, you can get them in all different makes, including some very expensive ones too. Um, but this is just a cheapy one that come with. I think it came with like a Draper chisel set or something. It's in, in a great one, but I don't generally use them. But I want to show you anyway. So what we're going to do is first of all we're going to do a bit of sharpening. I say sharp, and I'm going to flatten the back of a chisel. That one is particularly bad, so and that is just what's come out of the air in my workshop because I haven't been using my tools as I should be. I've been so busy on my other channel. Um, this channel has been, well, I've been suffering a little bit, really. Yeah, so a bit of that lubricant on there, like so. I need to open it up a bit better. There you go. So, all that is is a bit of engine oil and white spirit mixed together. Always have a rag nearby, and you'll see when I start doing this that. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit grimy. So I'm going to do the back first, flatten the back off first, and you straight away. Look at that. I'm a naughty woodworker. Yeah. So I'm going to flatten the back off like so first. And I'm using the 300 to start with because I need to be a bit aggressive because I need to get rid of the old rust. Da -da 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 -da. I will check the chat in a moment. I'm going live tonight on my other channel. Um, if you're a Brexit dude, I don't advise you go there. <laughs> so um, we're going to flatten, flatten the bag off. Hold it, making sure putting pressure so it's right across the length of the chisel so we don't end up rocking. Otherwise we're going to, yeah, we'll create a round on, on the back edge of the chisel. That's not very helpful. Now I've got to be a little bit more um, aggressive because I've allowed it to get in a bit of a state. This is one of my favourite chisels. I'll give you an idea how bad it is on the back there, look. If you can see the shiny in the middle, and it's still sort of pitted on the outside edges, because obviously, looking at it, there's probably a bit of a... It's not a very flat chisel. No. So it needs work anyway. It used to be a flat chisel. I'm sure it did. La 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 la, la 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 la. Doing it. Pitted, that's what it is, it's pitted. A bit more of the oil, as I say, it's mixed with a white spirit. You know, that stuff that you use to dilute your, your paint with all your um, clean your brushes. Well, it's getting better. The other thing you can do is you can use a um, wire wheel, wire wheel, a wire, a wire wheel in a bench grinder, such as the one over there um, and that can yeah get rid of a lot of the old rust but when it's got this bad you need to flatten it anyway so um feeling the back that chisel is pretty bad as well but it's a nice chisel has it's a really good chisel to use i don't know why i've allowed it to get in such a flipping state do you know actually to be fair this is probably the first year i've had such an issue with my tools going rusty yeah, unless I'm working on site, then there's an ongoing problem. But then what you should do, you should wrap your tools in like an oily rag or something like that, just to, you know, or use sort of gel crystals in the toolbox. Flip that over. So I'm not going to go mad at this stage. So I intend to do a bit of work in this workshop now. Um, and uh, these say the tools will get used. Because I've got a lot of, lots of work to do regarding 
making bird boxes and bat boxes and what have you for next year. Um, a bit late now because obviously <laughs> the birds have moved south. <laughs> a lot of them have anyway. But um, I want to make sure that I can make plenty of that sort of stuff ready for next year to do with the go. Yeah, the go family that we've got going at the moment where we're um, planting the trees and what have you and making bat boxes, bird boxes, and animal shelters and stuff. So don't be bad. This chisel is always going to be pitted because it's actually one that I acquired and it was in a bit of a state. So refurbished it, made it new handle and what have you. Um, and these new ring as well. See on the ferrule there? The handle's expanded, probably because of the damp. And that pressure is split, the ferrule. So anyway, let's see who's here anyway before we carry on with that. La 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 la. Oh. With the proof and the tools is a good idea. Hello, Mad Monk. How you doing, buddy? Um, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> the proof is in the button. Because if you don't, you end up with rusty tools like me. Yeah, I'm a bit of a rusty tool. Yeah, it also got a rusty tool. Anyway, <laughs> nothing to endo. A more rat, a clanger cool. That's a name and a half, isn't it? Thailand. Oh, a friend of mine's in Thailand. Hello, Simon Says. Yeah, that, I don't know what was going on with that. That was weird. But, yeah, it has to be vertical. Beyond, it probably works better anyway, Beyond, what I'm doing. So, um, anyway, let's carry on with that. So, I'm just getting worse with the rust. So now we've got to think about the that bevel here, which is generally about 25 degrees, this bevel. So, it's your primary bevel. It should be about 25 degrees, which is about there. Um, how do you maintain that? Yeah, every time you use a chisel. Yeah, if you haven't got any experience, like for instance, you can't, yeah, you, you really um, much experience sharpening your own tools. You haven't got that kind of muscle memory to actually make sure that your everything is in the same place every time. Now, I actually sold one of my machines yesterday. I sold a spindle molder because so I don't use it. No. I don't want to make windows if I can help it. Anyway, I sold my spindle molder and the guy said, Oh, I hate sharpening, I don't tend to do it if I can help it. Oh, how the hell do you do woodwork and if you, if you don't sharpen your tools? I thought, that's such a funny kind of woodworking. It's a kind of blunt tool woodworking. So I was trying, yeah, so obviously I was quite blunt with him. <laughs> yeah, arguing me, how can you actually sharp, yeah, do woodwork without sharpening your tools? But he's quite adamant that was fine, you know, because he's willing to woodwork because it just uses like uh, uh, pocket screws and stuff like that, you see, and just use battery drills and uh, other machines wherever he can. See, that's not for me. So, okay, so that, that is a honing guide. Now, you have to answer, how do you maintain that angle? Now, this is where it gets clever. This is where one of these come in. All right, let me show you. All right, so I'll turn it on by pressing the button. There you go, that's on. As you say, it's a zero. It's probably a zero. Oh, it's a zero now. Zero and can't make more. Of them. So I put it on there first, and then I zero it. Like right. that. So it should be should zero, go to zero. As you can see, it's gone to zero. Now what I do is I'll grab that and I'll put that on there. I want that until that is at about twenty five degrees. I can't see it. I'm showing you. That's a twenty one at the moment. It's quite low. In fact, this one I actually do have low, if I remember rightly. It's quite hard still. Uh, it's 22 degrees, so that'd be more. A lot higher, be there, there, there. there. Yeah, that should be about there, you see, at 25. I only do this for the purpose of actually showing you, but I'll probably put it where I normally have it. And this is not for the actual edge, the cutting edge. This is for, just for the primary bevel. Now I'm going to put this back down because I generally have this on a lot lower than that. Looks like I have about 21, which is 22. Right. So that, if I do that every time, that is going to end up in the right place. Yeah, and that angle will be how it's supposed to be, or how I intend it to, supposed, intend it to be. The other thing you can do, is grab yourself a marker pen or a little saw, and you've got a bit of wood or your bench or something. Now you've found the position of that chisel in your honing guide, all you need to do is push your honing guide up against your bench, right, like so, I put a line across there. I'd recommend you do a Stanley knife or even a saw blade just to create a bit of a line because that's, that's going to correct. That's not going to be in the right place. But if I argue it, I'll just show, to show you. I'll just do that, and then there'll be a line on there. So every time I come back to it, I can put a name with a chisel if I wanted to. All I need to do then is um, 
place the honing guide up against it and then adjust it according to that line in or out up to that line and I know it's going to be in exactly the same position no matter how much how worn this chisel might be in the period of time it's always going to be in the same position but this one I generally have if you look at that I'll get, that's way over 25 degrees that way it is but that's how I have it so that's not where I normally have it there but generally 25 degrees we look at you should um, look at I'll just show you on the screen up here actually let me just show you up here As you see here, this is your primary bevel. There's that one there, this long one. And that should be about 25 degrees. And then your um, secondary bevel, or your honing here, where's your cutting edge, would be 20, um, 28 to 30 degrees. Depending on well, they say two, 2 to 3 degrees on that one, or 1 to 2 degrees, depending on the steel of your plain iron. Oh, in this case, not, that's plain iron, that is. Oh, it's nice. Let's get up the chisel, find you the chisel. Do 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 such as that one, little chisel. Bang bed. Bang 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 bang. Is that one chisel? That's plain. That's what better old chisel. Bang plain. Bop 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 bop. Right. Anyway, 25 degrees. That's what it should be. I know that. La 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 la. I've got the wrong pictures up there, haven't I? So that, anyway, that's some um, use the whole hole in I'll show how to use one of these. Very simple. Whether you're using the oil stone or a diamond stone like this one, yeah, it'll be the same. Now the other thing, if you notice here, I made this little carrier to put these things in, which is literally a block of wood. It's such a bit of oak, it's gone black because of the um, iron filings. So as I put that in there, that is should generally should be relatively flush on that end there. So when I come across, it, I can roll over the top of it. Otherwise, if I'm on there, I've only, I'm only going to be using that end of the of the sharpener. If I do it here, I've got more. It could even be longer than that, to be honest. And I've got more actual space on the sharpener. So just like that. Now, this primary grind wouldn't normally do that on a sharpener anyway, because you can do that on a bench grinder, or, or even a linear shear. Um, so, that, well, I'm just the purpose of showing you this all. But if you use a linear shear, which is like a like a belt sander, like a bench type belt sander, um, and you can use that to actually do your primary, because it doesn't matter. If it's not your finished edge. Whereas whatever you do on a diamond stone or a um, oil stone, such as a, uh, a Norton silicon carbide or something like that, you know, carbide. Your, uh, your, your, the edge will be the one that you're cutting. You, it will be your cutting edge. But you can do this. I don't see the thing is I don't use bench grinders to sharpen my tools at all. Two reasons. One is it creates heat. You constantly dunk, have to dunk it into water, keep it cool. And you've only got to make a mistake once, and the steel starts going a bit blue, and you'll you lose the temper in the steel. Um, be, yeah, the hardness in the steel. So I don't use it anyway. I generally use a linisher because it's cooler. Yeah. Um, and the other thing about it is, it creates a bit of a hollow grind because the, the wheel's round. On a bench grinder, you've got a round wheel, haven't you? So you create a bit of a cur hollow grind. Oh, I don't like that. Some people do, but I don't like it. Whether you're using a tall mech or, or a bench grinder, I don't like it. I think my, I, I prefer my edge to be straight. Really. So that's one way of doing it, like using a, um, as you can see, a diamond stone like so. Pause three times. You can see it's starting to get shiny. Now the dead giveaway, you know, I've been doing this by hand because it's not flat. <laughs> what I mean to do it by hand without a guide. I can see it's actually not flat. Now what has got a good idea when you're doing this, because these things work the way loose. Let's have a screwdriver so you can really tighten up or a pair of grips. Um, but yeah, it's it's not it's not perfect. When you're doing it by hand, hand. I know some people say, oh, yeah, I always do it by hand. That's fine, you know, if, if that suits you. Um, if you. If you haven't got that muscle memory, or every so often I recommend that you do it using some kind of guide to bring you back to the norm. So you, if you have any errors you make by hand over a period of time, a cumulative error, you can correct it, improve it, so to speak. So, um, 
It's just, uh, you know, much, much faster using diamond than it is using an oil stone. That's loads better. So now I'm going to put it onto the um, secondary grind, yeah, the uh, honed edge secondary grind. And I'm going to bring it back, and then we'll use some other um, stones as well. Now when we do the chis the plain irons, because I've got really nice plain irons, a Victor ca cast steel um, plain irons, we'll be doing it on the uh, carriages over there, because I don't want to mess them up. Got to be able to shave with it, you see. Yeah, you've got to do your never regions. If you ain't got the guts to do your every, um, never regions with your sharpened edge, well then quite frankly you should never ever, well, be near at all in the first place, should you? No, don't do that. Just in case. Like I said, this is actually a 300 grit diamond, which is um, quite coarse. So, no, it's, and I should really be using my... This. Let's put that on there. Now I'm on the, on the primary grind. So this is quite a 24, 25. Remember right, I always had this one quite. Yeah, I have. This has always been quite um, shallow, 24. But generally speaking, you don't want to go below 30, um, 20, uh, 28, 30 degrees. So what's going on there? Do, 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 do. Aha, feel it now. Now if you're doing this by hand, you're not using any honing guides like this one, you don't want your stone all the way up here. You actually want it low. So you I have actually got a set of stones over in the drawer that I've mounted in a drawer just over there. And generally I'll have it low. Because if you have this rocking motion, you can maintain your angle much more efficiently than you can if you actually got your hand up here. Yes, yeah, so you, you create like a, a bit of a swing, you know? Okay. <laughs> Doing it. That's lovely. Lovely jubbly. Now you'll know when you start getting close because you'll feel burr on the back of the chisel. We're not there yet. And then we'll start going down the grits. Still not there. Getting close. Now I like these old chisels, so I find the steel is much nicer to work with. Yeah, this one's not too bad to sharpen, you know, not, not too difficult to sharpen, plus it um, holds its edge a long while. It's more absorby. When you get into the harder chisels, they're really hard to sharpen. Not so bad with diamond mind than, um, than an oil stone. They do get a bit tricky. Now if you've got a tool roll for your chisels, which I have, but I can't find them and thing, I'll put it somewhere safe, I can't think where I'll put it. It might have to be in that cabinet over there. You can actually oil the tools up, wrap them up in tool roll, and, and maybe with a couple of sachets of silica gel crystals. That's getting close now. Um, and then that'll stop it from rusting. If you just put them away for the winter. So for winterizing. If you're going to be using them again, obviously you just need to keep them clean and uh, and oiled up. And regular use, you, you will do that naturally because obviously, like from them using oil at the moment, you'll naturally do it. The other thing you can do, and what some people do, I don't necessarily like it, but you put ghoul over your chisels in the sense of using a clear lacquer because I like coat of clear lacquer just for the purpose it's going to last the um, winter, and that does work to keep. Yeah, it, it, obviously prevent them from rusting. But what happens is all the areas where like for instance build up over here and um, like on the tang and what have you, it just builds up and builds up over a period of time and you did it with a lacquer that you never get rid of on your chisels. Um, and also it can clog your oil stones up if you keep using effectively you know, what is a lacquer in the day, a lot of these water-based lacquer, especially acrylic ones, what have you, they're just um 
well, they're solvent based generally in, in, a, in a spray. But they, um, they're plastic effectively, aren't they? And they're just going to clog everything up. So if you don't want to use water stones, um, obviously you'd be using, you have to use water. Yeah. And you've got to soak your stones as well. So you, you basically keep them in water. Keep using oil and water stones. Um, I don't necessarily recommend using water stones. I have got a set. I, I have. I do use if I'm using Japanese chisels, which I can't. The problem for the kind of work I do, the Japanese chisels, they're, they're great, but half the time I don't get to use them. So I've just put them in the drawer and put them out of the way. So they take a lot of work, you see. They take a lot of work to with the water stones, but I keep a good edge on them. And my God, you get a real edge on them. So they are very good. But for most people, they're, they're an overkill. They really are. Now, now I can feel the burr. As you run the hand at the back of the chisel like so, you'll feel a burr. Basically what's happened is you created a micro burr. It's, um, it's like a wire edge of steel and it's folded over. So you feel it on the back of your hand like so, and you can feel that that's rough. It catches things like a little hook. It needs a little bit more hit um, on that side of the chisel to straighten the chisel up. Um, ain't quite ready on that side, but this side, it's going to be sacrificed a bit more, so I can get that edge on that side as I want it. Which is that side there. So a little bit more work, won't take much longer though. Strange that my phone's only working in a vertical format. That is odd. So, yeah, that's doing it. Very, very close now, very close indeed. So these um, little honing guys, they do work, they're quite good really, I suppose. Um, I just prefer my carriage, just using the carriage, you know, my setup that I've got up over there. Alright, we are pretty much there, a little bit more. And then we'll swap the stones down and work our way down the stones. I'm a, with a chisel, I only go down to a thousand grit with a chisel generally, I don't need to go much further than that um, for the type of work that I do. So, don't forget these can also rust. So bear that in mind. I found that when I was at Ginger Island with Graham Hughes, and they're doing 400 grit, um, I found that a lot of my tools, including my uh, sharpeners, just kept rusting. Wasn't be helpful. It's all salt air, you see. There we go. Now I'm going to do more on this channel. Um, over a pair of time, I'll try and build it up now, I think. I, I have said that before, Mike, but I just got sidetracked on the political channel. But I'm really struggling to get views on that channel now. It's, it's really, for me, it seemed to really change quite a bit. And I what I love, to be honest. With you. I, politics is depressing. <laughs> it really is depressing. I'd rather do um, woodwork. Every day of the week, to be honest. You know, that's what I've been brought up to. Now, now I'm getting an edge. I feel that. You'll soon slice with it yourself with that now. Um, it won't be enough to actually just have a grab of paper. The slice paper, you get a little thing. Paper here. I don't think it's ready for that yet. Oh, maybe. That needs to be a bit sharp than that, but there, you know, it's there. That's getting there. So we're going to change it over now. The to the last stage is you don't need to do it for so long. Nowhere near. Now, only people bit watching this, so for instance, you know, they might say, oh, don't do it like that. Works for me. So that's what I'm doing. Right, so we're going to... Uh, now we're on the 600 grit now. And I'll finish off with a 1,000. I'm not going to do any sharper than a 1,000. Where you're finer than a 1,000 grit. Yeah, it can be a bit of an overkill. And obviously the finer your edge, the more easy it's going to get damaged. These are good chisels though, these Robert Sorbys. If you can get older on it, it's obviously very old. It's probably 50 years older than something stupid like that. It's ancient. Maybe 50 years? Maybe. It's a bit of an edge, so... Now you can see on there, you can see the edge, how that's coming along on there now. Yeah. There's still a bit of pitting on the side here, but I'll clean it up later. That's not a huge problem. This chisel always has been pitted, because this was seriously in a bad way when I first got it. So some things you can't really do a lot about without reducing the size of the chisel, <laughs> making it thinner. <laughs> Well, it really is getting sharp now. That's on the five, That's on six, 600 grit, that is. 
Now, it doesn't take this long, you know, generally, because, but it is at the moment because I'm jabbering and I'm talking. So um, what I tend to do is I put a couple of those in there. That this one doesn't fit in there, you see. It's too low. So it's a, it's a very thin. These are, these are only cheap. They, you get a set of three of these for about 15 euros on Amazon. These ones are a bit more expensive. But even these aren't expensive ones. You know what I mean? Say these are a set of three of these, about 30 euros. So it's not expensive. Um, obviously, if you go for, I don't know, one of the um, main brands, yeah, they, are, they can get very expensive. But you don't have to. You know? You really don't have to. And I bought these because I was like, well, I'll give it a go, you know. Can't, will I better get on with them? Um, and I use them a lot now. Now with this one, because it'll fit on, I can't come off the edge here because I'll damage the edge of the chisel itself. So I'm going to just keep it on there like so and just flip the actual stone around each time. Let's just flip that around. I've got carpal tunnel syndrome. Well, I had the operation for it. My, my hands aren't quite as dexterous as they used to be. So I have to bear that in mind as well. I get like a trigger finger. My fingers lock up. Now that should really be putting an edge on there now. Yeah, but I've still got the burr on the back. So there are various things we can do to remove that burr. We take this out here now. Now don't, when you do this, don't pull it out like that. It'll be tempted to do that. Make it wider and get it like, like so. Obviously what you're going to do is then damaging the, the edge of your chisel. You've kind of undone everything that, you know, that you have done. God, that feels nice and sharp now. But that'll still have a burr on it. It'll be a finer burr because you've got another thousand grit. But that'll still have a burr on that chisel. So as you run your hands over, you can feel it on the back of the chisel. Like I say, it's like this little hook edge that's trying to grab your skin. What's that? I just heard the noise. <laughs> um, yeah, just grab on the back of your skin like so, so you can feel that. Now, the various ways of removing that, one is, you probably might have seen me do this before, is using your palm of your hand and you hone it like so. I don't necessarily recommend that if you had never done it before, because you end up cutting your hands. Like the blood go everywhere. It's not very good. It's very close to the veins as well, so don't do that. No, it's better to, if you're going to do it that way, it's best to do it with a, um, an actual plane iron, the wider, you're less likely to cut yourself, actually. Um, the other way you can do that is you can use a, a leather strop. And I've got one actually over here that I've got mounted in a bit of wood. So effectively with that, what you can do is, there is what you do, basically, you put a bit of cut and paste on there, and you just bring it back like so, yeah, about 20 odd times, and then flip it around, and do the opposite on the back edge of the chisel. It's got cut and paste on it. So what does that bend the actual wire edge, bounce and forwards, bounce and forwards until it effectively breaks off. Now that's getting sharp now. The other way you can do it is you can create a bit of a how, how do you explain this? Uh, a bit of a back bevel. So um, you put your chisel down onto the, your um, stone, like so. As long as your stone's flat, and you just do a couple of swipes. Or strokes with that chisel on your um, diamond stone or oil stone, what have you. Um, but some people even do go a step further than that and create an actual back bevel. I've seen this done a few times before, and I have done it myself. It does work. I'm, I'm not a great lover of it, um, but that's just me. It's still real, like so, on the edge of your actual diamond stone, like so. Grab the chisel, and that just creates, creates a little bit, of, just lifts the back edge. Of your chisel, just just a, t a fraction, about a thirty second of an inch. Oh, is that old money or new money? And then literally just bring the chisel backwards and forwards, and you create a back bevel on that chisel. And that can be good. I'm not a lover of it. I I, I prefer to. Well, that does seem to work. <laughs> Let's bring it back. So I prefer to use the um, honing on the uh, on a leather strop or or my hand like so. Ow. I just cut myself. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that is sharp. <laughs> That's what happens when you're jabbering and you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Let's see if it's sharp anyway. I know it's sharp, I just cut myself. So yeah. Yeah, it's fairly sharp. Oh, I have cut myself and all. Put blood everywhere. Yeah, that's sharp. Yeah, that's lovely and sharp. So that's a chisel. Nice sharp chisel, and I have most definitely cut myself. Oh dear! To do as I say, not to do. <laughs> that was it the way round. 
Oh dear, never mind. Um, I'm happy with that. It's not perfect, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually. Oh, quite, I have cut myself now. Wow, it's sharp. You can see it gapes. That gaping. <laughs> right, um, so what I'm going to do is now, because I'm going to put the chisel away, there's various things we can do now to stop from rusting. One was what I said earlier about putting a little bit of clear lacquer on. I don't particularly like that idea, but blood everywhere now. Um, I tend to use a bit of oil. So you can have a bit on the bit of rag, or like I've got here, I've got a little bit of oil and a bit of white spirit in a tub, and I'll literally just paint a little bit over there. Make sure I've got it everywhere, like so. And then what I'll do is I'll then load the rag that I'm going to use, that's my oily rag, like so. So you get double whammy then, so you're loading your rag up at the same time of that's protecting your chisel. I'm not protecting from blood though, am I? No. <laughs> so, yeah, that is lovely. So that's really sharp. That's so very simple. So if you haven't, or you're not confident about doing it by hand, don't do what I did, obviously. You know, um, you get one of these. These things are cheap, and you can use them on chisels, but also on your plain irons. You basically just put the plain iron on the top edge here. So they're worth, definitely worth considering. I'm going to put that away now before I cut myself out again. <laughs> Back on the rack it goes. That's one gone. I am believing them all. Blimey. I see. Everyone's clicked off now. <laughs> oh no, it's blood! Right, let's bring it up there, like so. Locked up chat. Swing low, good move. Yeah. My favourite subject, but at least I bought a set of diamond sharpens. Definitely worth having. Bernard, really are. Um, I use them all the time, I really do. And they, these are only cheap, easy, nothing fancy. It's just cheapy ones I got off Amazon or eBay or stuff. I think it was, well, even eBay actually. And I've had these quite a while now. I must have had them six years, these ones. And they're still going strong. So they can't be bad. And the biggest worry with them is whether they're flat. Yeah, because if they're not flat, it's a bit pointless, they're useless. Uh, but they were. I, you know, I checked them with a, a rule and what have you, and plenty flat enough for what I, I want. So you've got to think about what, what, is, what is right for you. You know, do you want me to spend an absolute fortune, like 150 quid for a set of uh, diamond stones? Well, the likelihood is you're going to stick with your oil stone. To oil stones, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to use an oil stone. Now, although I do still like the oil stone, in this case it's a Norton India stone, we are going to move over to that. And we're going to move over to the, to the bench over here. I could probably bleed everywhere now, I could bleed out. That's what I'll do. Alright, let's bring you over here, my little microphone. So if you're in the world, you've got to make sure the microphone's close enough all the time. So, okay, this is my little Norton um, stone, India stone. It's upside down. You, you look on there, Norton. Alright, um, these are great. Like India um, com combination stone. But I can't remember the grit. I think they're something like 600 to 1,000 grit or something like that. They're not very fine. But for most people, they are good enough. And they're cheap. These don't cost a lot at all. You get one of these about 20 quid, what have you. You know. Um, not in France, though. In, in the United States, these things are really cheap. In the UK, they're moderately cheap. In France, they're ridiculously expensive. So, <laughs> welcome to France. So, uh, yeah. Not everything is bearing in France, I must say. A lot of stuff isn't. I'm dribbling blood everywhere, I am, never mind. Sailor V, it's the dangers of working with wood and sharp things. Keep the children away from the sharp stuff. Right, so we're going to do another chisel. We're going to do this one here, and this is just a little draper chisel. It's actually not bad little chisel, it's draper expert. I think you could, yeah, inverted, yeah, quotations. Um, but the steel's actually quite good. Well, it's not a bad chisel at all. You get quite a reasonable edge on. You not you. I can't get as good edge on this as I can on that Robert Sorby. Definitely not. But it, it, for most people, it's pretty good enough. With an oil stone, you can't use water. With the, with the diamond stones, yeah, you, know, you can use a drop of water on it. It's not a huge problem really. I'm not a lover of using water at all because water and well, iron tools or steel tools seems like like a bit silly. Yeah, it just rusts, doesn't it? I'm dribbling blood everywhere. Oh god. It's <laughs> a bad example, wasn't it? That was a bad example. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do first of all, although I put the oil on the wrong side of the stone, I'm gonna flip that over. So I want to do the coarse side first. 
on this don't. And this again is just um, the oil I'm using. Not people just use like a three in one type oil, yeah, like a, the sort of stuff you put on your bike chain. That's absolutely fine. But you just want thin oil. Just a thin oil, so it's just, just to lubricate your tools that's all it's for. Well, yeah, while you run them back to the force, so they don't get, you know, if you go really quick, you'll get them hot. And in this case, it's just engine oil and a bit of white spirit mixed in with it. So we're going to do the same again, pretty much the same process again. Um, and then we're going to move over to the other setup over there, which is the carriage, using the carriage system, which I love using because it really, God, it works. We've got to the chisels then, not the chisels, onto the plain irons. So, same, same difference yet again. But obviously, you've got to make sure that your stones are flat. And that's the problem with uh, an, uh, an oil stone such as a combination stone, such as this India um, combination stone. Uh, because over a period of time they'll scallop. So you have to, that's why it's important you use the whole width of the stone. But you can use a diamond stone to flatten your oil stone if you want, but then again, if you've got a diamond stone, you might not want to use the oil stone. So, yeah, a bit like that, really, isn't it? So, yeah, so basically just balance the force, balance the force, balance the force. And what we're doing is trying to maintain, or not maintain, you maintain the flatness of the stone itself. Because obviously when you use something narrow on something that's wider, you, potentially you might be using one area of the stone more than the other. So you can make it uneasy. So you've got to sort of split the difference between flattening the tool but also sharpening the tool. And these tools, as you like I said, have got rust, surface rust on them. Now, if it's a little bit rust like this one, you could just run it over the, you know, with a oh, bench grind or something like that with the uh, uh, wire brushing to remove the excess rust. And that probably, yeah, probably good enough, you know. I'll tell you one thing I don't like about these new chisels though, the machining is terrible. Now this one, I don't even see it. Instead of it being smooth, you see it? Now you actually see it, and now I've actually run it over the oil stone a few times. Can you see all that machining marks in the, in the stone? I know it shouldn't really matter, but it does. I, I, I don't like it. Yeah, over a period of time, you, you'd remove that, obviously, by using the chisel and sharpen it. And as you see, it's rusted all the back here. And it looks as though these haven't been used, these chisels, because they have been used. Probably because they were a gift, they're a gift from the kids. So um, I do use them, just, you know. But I do prefer the old tools. There are, if you haven't got any chisels, what have you, and you want to invest in a set of chisels, uh, three cherries, they're, they're nice, they're nice chisel. Um, even uh, Stanley Sweetheart range of chisels, they're okay. But um, a lot of the Stanley stuff now is all made in China, and I'm not saying it's bad because it's made in China, I'm saying they're not very, a lot of the Stanley stuff isn't good now. It just isn't. Um, they do a number seven Bailey hand plane. Such as, oh my god, I've got, I've got a bot comments coming up. <laughs> Such as this number seven, which we're going to sharpen in a minute. This one here. They do a version of this. It's rubbish. It's called, they call it Stanley Bailey, but it's not. This is a, this is a proper Stanley Bailey, and it's a two and a half inch Stanley Bailey, and it's a fantastic machine. A big hit. I use this so much. Yes, I've made new handles, what have you, so um, a new tote and a new knob. What have you? And I pack cleaned and painted it well because it was a hell of a state. I also we've installed um, Victor uh, Castile the plain irons in it as well, which are much thicker and the steel quality is far superior. I can't remember what grey steel it was, but whatever it is, it works. So that is definitely worth having. So you're better off finding old tools and refurbishing them if you can. If you can't afford to invest in, I don't know, like Lee Nielsen or something like that, or um. Or what else is there? Clifton, you know, stuff, you know, some decent, decent tools, but they're expensive. There are some like Bench Dog and a few others that they aren't so expensive. They they are good tools. They are good tools, and even some of the Footprint Footprint do do a range of chisels, chisels a range of well, chisels as well, but a range of planes. And although they're nowhere near as good as that, um, for the money, they're great value. But if you can get over an old tool and just tart it up, make it decent, you know, might take a little bit of work, new plain iron, stuff like that, definitely worth doing. You know, if you want to get yourself a range of oh, half decent tools. So anyway, let's flatten that off again. So you've got to try and do the whole width of the chisel and the whole length of the chisel at the same time. So that's quite good. I'm starting to get shiny on this edge here. And there's actually a bit of damage to the edge of this chisel. So 
Um, if it's re- it isn't too bad, but if it got too bad, you'd have, you'd really or stick it on a linish or something. You know, create a new primary bevel and then start again, basically. Um, but it isn't too bad. So this is just a bog standard cheap chisel. You know, come on a set. I put it thirty quid for the set or something. Like that wouldn't be a lot of money. So you don't have to spend a fortune. But what you do have to do is make sure over a period of time you actually start, um, yeah, make them good. The steel's okay, you, you, you've got a starting point, haven't you? So now I'm going to the back of the chisel. I'm not going to try and work out what the, the bevel is or anything like that, because I'm going to do this freehand, and the bevel's there, so I'm just going to go with it. So I can feel, when I bring the chisel up, I can feel whether I'm rocking on it or whether I've actually got the flat of the chisel. And then I'm going to clean up the primary bevel. Or you could stick it, like I say, you could um, create a new primary bevel. Which is, like I say, 25 degrees. Now because this is kind of a universal sort of chisel, multi-purpose chisel, bit the bevel edge you want to have you as well. You know, you, you don't have to go mad with it. As long as you get it sharp, so you can slice yourself open, that's, you know, that works. <laughs> Da, 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 Right, so. So just cleaned off the primary bevel. So just took off the little rust off the primary bevel. And uh, now we're going to do the actual secondary grind or secondary bevel, which is going to be the actual edge for which it's going to probably slice this. I won't be doing that again because I've already got a cut on my hand. It's not a good idea then, you see. That'll hurt. Yeah. Alright, so now we're going to go on to the set. I'm doing this one by hand. Yeah? Ideally, I'll be doing it from this direction. Which we will, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Because I can't, that's the wrong way. I'm right handed. So I'll be doing it with the stone to my right hand side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up onto the second bevel. I'm going to, I know where the, the primary bevel is. I'm going to fix it up a little bit on the second bevel. And because I need to get rid of a little notch that's in there, I'm going to. Do it by hand first, and set the bevel on the coarse side of the stone. Figure of eight in this case. Trying to use as much of the stone as I possibly can. And that stone's still too high. Normally I'd be down here. So I create that rock. So I could show you. So I've got a bit of a mess over there a minute. Using my draw setup. Like I say this is too high, so ideally, I'd say it should be uh, probably about here for me, unless you're taller. But for me, I need to, you, because my arms have to bend upwards, that's incorrect. But I've been doing this long enough to feel what is right and what is wrong. So I'll have a look at that. Yeah, that's doing it, that's it. I haven't removed the notches, there's a couple of little notches in there, I don't think you want me to see it, but there is a couple of little notches in which we won't remove. Now when I put the pressure, I don't hold the chisel up here, this is a mistake people make. I hold the chisel too far up. I actually hold the, ch go, hold the chisel at the basic angle and feel where it's got to go, but then I use my fingers and put the pressure near the edge I'm sharpening. So I'm just creating a gentle but even pressure. Now, if you try and do it back here, what you'll end up doing is you end up putting pressure on the either side of the actual chisel and you'll create well, an angle to your chisel, you won't sharpen it straight or flat. Yeah, straight. So I tend to put a little bit of pressure, bring it up to where I want it to go, a little bit of pressure, two fingers like so, onto near the cutting edge, to the secondary bevel, which we will get to around 28 to 30 degrees. Like so, and just check it every so often, I'm just making sure to see whether or not I'm getting close to getting rid of that little notch in there. A small notch, I've obviously hit something with it that's too hard, probably a screw or no. Or maybe I've used the chisel as a screwdriver, that's what this is does. Now I feel there's a hell of a burr on the back there now. So even though it looks like the notch is still there, it might be just the burr, a gap in the burr. So what I'll do is I'll just remove that, and I'm not going to use back my hand this time because I've uh, stick this over because I've sliced my hand <laughs> and that'll hurt. <laughs> so perhaps it was like so. Burrs in the opposite direction. 
Yeah, that's, that's getting close to Now I've flipped it over, I'm now going to put the main edge on it. It's going to be the same angle what I have been doing, around, tw around 28 degrees I reckon. It feels about right. And now I'm going to use the fine edge of the stone. Or well, the fine face, the fine side. I don't, think it's, but it's, don't feel that fine, it feels around 800, maybe a thousand um, grit. It's doing it though, that really is. So this, this it's muscle memory, is what it is, it's muscle memory. I'll fill the burr there again, so I'm going to bring it back on itself, like so. Back edge, and then down, like so, onto that uh, stone, and then back again, and then back again. Um, bend, what I'm doing is I'm creating metal fatigue and bending that burr backwards and forwards. Instead, of, yeah, there's no way of doing it actually. If you get a burr, if you've got a bit of wood, some people just do this. So you're using the edge of your chisel on the, onto a piece of wood like so, and up, up like so, and you peel it off. You peel that bevel off. You know, that, um, that burr. Okay, we're getting very close now. So, and then we'll move on to the plain iron. This plain here, we'll, that one. And we'll sharpen that up, and then we'll sort the sides and prep this up for winterisation. Because obviously, there's more bits on here, you see. So you've got to make sure you lubricate everything you can. And also, you want to protect the handles, the tote, and the knob, because they can take on moisture and split. So swipes. Let's do it every. Now these chisels are not ones that I try and get so flipping sharp I cut myself on. I really just do these to purpose for more mundane work. Yeah, we've got a lump up with a lamp on You know, not lump hammer, but a mallet. <laughs> now I know these ones with the impact handles or rubber hands like this, you're supposed to be able to hit them with a hammer. No, don't do that. What happens with a period of time, the tang in here drives up the handle. In fact, it's split or damage the handle. Okay. Now that is pretty sharp, but I wouldn't say it's as sharp as the last one. So you could finish off with the um, thousand grit or finer diamond stone if you wanted to. But it doesn't matter for this job because what I'm going to use this chisel for, I don't use it for my fine work, I use my old chisel for the fine work. But that is still going to. Cut a, big, a piece of paper, I can imagine. Maybe not as quite not as sharp as the as the saw. But you know, you cut it. Yeah. So that definitely. Okay. So now that one go back on the rack. Over here. Oh, it's going to take forever to get through. That's not. This is going to be piecework. Bit by bit, I'll get through them and you know, clean them all up, sharpen them all up, so they're usable chisels again. Can you see that one there? Yeah. You know, just because I haven't been using them and because the air is damp. I take on moisture. One thing I didn't do with that is I just had oil on it, but I'm going to put a bit of oil on that just to make sure it can soak in there and actually um, protect the chisel. Grab the rag, and give it a wipe over, just to make sure that it's, um, you know, it, it doesn't, yeah, get rusty, surface rust. Little Mac. For a period of time, I'll keep doing it and hopefully I'll get him back into shape because. I'm a bit embarrassed about it actually, I feel I've neglected my tools. You can't must neglect your tool, no. It's like the other half. Don't do it. Let's see what you say anyway. La 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 la. Ooh, microphone's all the way over here again. Oh dear. Now, I have got a, um, a radio mic, but it doesn't always, the audio is not always that great. Sometimes I get interference with it, which isn't very good. Oh, look at that. I can't do a lot about it at the moment, can I? Uh, oh, of course I can. Naughty, naughty, naughty comments. Oh, there's another one. Three of them. But me. Oh. That one as well. Report. Okay, and another one. Report. Okay, that's done. Aren't they naughty? Maybe viewers are lower this, lower this last week because of the US midterms and not. Maybe, maybe, if you're talking about, um, yeah, but uh, the other channel really struggles um, these days. It's, um, I'm finding it really hard to get the views that I used to get, you know, and I don't know, I honestly don't know, I don't know why, but there you go. It's one of the things, isn't it, you know, that's YouTube for you. But I'll tell you what has, they do keep doing, they keep um, 
Well, obviously it's YouTube. They algorithm updates. Whenever that happens, things seem to change. Because I do keep my, my ear to the ground regarding the SEO and what have you for the channel, but also for my um, websites. Because um, I, I find it interesting, to be fair, anyway. But I, it, the, yeah, there's been um, quite a few updates, and they're quite um, how to put it, major updates. So it's not very um, very helpful. And some channels, you know, they obviously they they get. I'm a bit of a quiet taste. Yeah, I've been told that before. The missus told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Ev oh, careful, marks. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, so to speak. There you go. But I, I understand that. You know, some people are my cup of tea. Right, so we've got over here, it's got a set up here. Let's bring it over there as you can see. And it's a very simple idea. Now I have a series of these carriages, like this so. And effectively set up in a way so um, the angle's correct all the almost all the time. Now I've got a set of three stones. I have a coarse oil stone, a fine oil stone, and a super fine. And this is a water stone, this one. So this one we have to use with water. Although I have used um, white spirit on them before, just white spirit. But you're not supposed to. So we're going to sharpen up that um, Stanley base. Let me grab that. Such as this one here. And um, the beauty about the Stanley Bailey is it's a good solid tool. It really is a good solid tool. Uh, this one is particularly nice. It's got a really flat bottom on it. I've, I had it all machined up, you see. They sat on a big machine and, and it literally just skimmed, just lightly like you skimmed the sole of this um, plane. Now, it could do with um, a bit of TLC again, to be honest. It feels a bit rough. So, one thing we do with that is we, I quite often just use an oil stone on there and literally got also in there. Uh, diamond stone. Run it through a few times just to polish it off. You can see there's a bit of pit in there as well. Where it's sat in the rack and a bit of moisture's got trapped behind it. But on the whole, these are our working tools. So they're not, they're not there to be pretty, so to speak. They're there to do a job. But they still need to function. And to function, they need to be clean and they need to be sharp. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the plain iron first. And these are Victor's. Victor hand-forged plain irons. And they are bring. I probably paid more for that than I did for the actual plane itself when I bought it. So, hello gingers, hope you're well. Um, so that is the plain iron, and then we have the back here. So we're going to remove that, by well, there's a screw in there, you see, let me just, I'm using the actual lever cap to remove the screw. Some people don't recommend that, because you can break them. Oh, cool, that's tight. Big and I never have, so. Right, it's never separated them. So I'll put this plane out of the way for the moment. So leave a cap in the, uh, the plane in the back there. And I'll put this out of the way. I'll do this. Now these plane irons, these Victor hand forged plane irons, you can get crazy sharp. You really can. And uh, although this one's been done by hand a few times, looking at it, yeah, it has. Because that's what I generally tend to do. I tend to do it by hand, do it on hair, and I'll. Yeah, if I'm in a hurry, just quick edge on it, then back on here. So it might take a little bit of work to get this how I want it. i also use a one of them as well. I'll get to that stage. And there should be my, where is? La 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 la. What have I done with that? My cut, my cut and paste. What have I done with my cut and paste? Hmm, that's annoying. Usually I have a little cut and paste that I use on there, which I don't know where I'll put it. Silly me, okay, I mind it wasn't here. Might be in here. Nope. Oh, never mind. <laughs> put it somewhere but I can't think where I put it. So there is cut and paste already in there anyway, so I'll have to use a bit white spirit to bring the paste to the top. But we're going to use this one first using a carriage such as this one. And we're going to place this in the carriage. And I do have a mark on here. Where is it on? Oh, it was on there, it's disappeared. Uh, but I am going to use 
my digital angle finder again, little tool. So first of all, it has to be zeroed onto this uh, stone. So I'll press that button, and it'll zero itself. So now I'm going to place this onto a hole, and I'm going to clean up the primary bevel first. It should be around. These are quite hard steel, so back, 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 back. Twenty-five. So on there, twenty-five. Mm -hmm. There, that's twenty-five. Then twenty-six. A bit more. That's near as damp because I might have to tweak it anyway because I'll do it to how it was before because I still see the the flatness on the back of that. And then we could put a bit of oil on there and then we'll uh, merry, 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 create that primary bevel. And then we don't need to go on to the second stone for the primary bevel. So the primary bevel is the bevel that doesn't do the cutting. It just provides well the platform for a sharp bevel edge for your main cutting edge, your secondary bevel. Now while I'm doing this, I'll show you something. Now this is a... Oh, it, the bevel on, on this plane iron is on the bottom, alright? And this is a standard plane such as, such as my number 7 hand plane over there. That, you know, the number 7 baby that we're using here. But if you say for instance uh, a low angle plane such as this one yeah the plane iron is actually in the opposite direction instead of the bit may bevel being on the bottom of the plane iron is on the top of the plane iron and there's no chip breaker like you would have on this no whereas this one the bevel can not opposite directions you think to yourself okay well that, that looks really low angle isn't it you know actually it's not much lower than that one because the bevel's on the opposite, so you have to add the angle of the bevel, you see, onto the actual plane iron itself. So it's a, they're not, even though you think they're low angle, they're not much, about a couple of degrees in it. D difference, that's all it is. It's more a case of the way it actually cuts. It, they cut differently. So I'll try and get the whole width of the, or the length of the stone. I shouldn't come off the end because I've set this up so it actually butts on the back here. So it could be a little bit more than that, to be fair. But the back of the board. You've got a bit of a notch on there. And the steel of this plane iron is so much harder than any of the others that I've got. Well, I've got two with these plane irons in. I've got this number six with these um, Victor uh, plane irons. Um, but you feel the steel is so much harder. It takes a lot more work and a lot more effort to get a bevel on there. Now I'm looking at I started. I can see where it's touching and it needs to be further back. It does a bit further back than that. Let's try that. The sound and noise is just different. The beauty about these carriages, you virtually can't get it wrong. Oh, I can see it now. Yeah, yeah that's it. So we're going to get pressure. Clean up the primary bevel. And then we'll bring it down to the actual cutting edge to create the secondary bevel. Yeah, that's doing it. Now, I'm quite tempted to invest in a, a set of large or um, diamond stones because they are faster. Now I've had this set up going for quite a while now and um, I've always used it. And these carriages, this has got wax on there, so it's they slide and wax on there, scandal wax. And they slide back and forwards and yeah, it don't take too much actual effort, it just takes time. Whereas the diamond um, sharpeners, they're just faster, they're just faster to use. So I'm just doing the primary bevel, I'm not, really, I'm not trying to create an edge at this stage, I'm just trying to make sure that the primary bevel is um, flat. I do quite often, like I said before, I use a linisher. So for instance, I'll use my, um, oh, I say linisher, it's literally like a uh, belt sander, bench mount belt sander. 
and it's six inches wide and it's um the belt itself is about four foot long i think it's four or five foot long or six foot long it's quite a long belt um it goes right round you see so it's because it's a belt <laughs> so i keep pulling backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards i can't really get it wrong you see because the angle is set by this yeah, there's no rocking or anything like that because it's fairly flattish here. It's because it's nice and big and plenty to get hold of and what have you. A bit like me. Yeah, you can't really go wrong with it. A bit like me. <laughs> it works. Right. Now a friend of mine actually came designed this idea and he had an article. I didn't realise it was Bruce at the time. And um, Bruce, Bruce Tomlinson, an article in the uh, oh, it was a carpentry magazine. I can't remember what it's called now. It was a cabinet maker or something. Anyway, he had this. He was a chair designer, is what he was. And he t he came up with this design, and he had an article in in this paper which I read. And I didn't realise it was him until um, I got to the end of the article and put two together, saw his picture. I think it was an American paper, actually, an American ma magazine. Bruce Tomlinson is his name. Lovely guy. So um I made my own setup, so which works works well. Now Bruce he um he's he's has gone now, he's died. He's um he lived not that far away from me actually, literally about twenty kilometres away. No, about thirty kilometres away. A little place called Busier Golon in France. His, his missus still lives here, um Jenny. I think, I don't know, I think she's gone back now, she hasn't seen her for years, Jenny. Although I like Bruce, I wasn't keen on Now we're getting there. Now that is using, it's actually getting quite sharp already. So now we're going to move on to this stone, over here, but change the angle. Because at the moment I'm doing the primary bevel, I need to create my secondary bevel, the bit that does the work. So um, I can see on here that I have been using this Oh, sharp, I've been sharpening this by hand, probably a bit ad hoc as I'm going along because I need a quick edge on it. And I've, I've created a bit of hand put it, it's not, it's not pretty. You know, the sharp, the actual edge itself is, but the main primary bevel looks a bit kind of like it's been gnawed a bit. Yeah, it's not as it should be. But the rest of it, oh yeah, it's getting sharp. So now we want to move on to this one. Need to move that up a little bit. That's it. That's fine. That Let's see what it's like down to um, I can't remember what this was actually quite fine. Normally, you'll find, as I say, about 20, 20, um, 28 to 30 degrees angle for your sharpened edge. Um, zeroed, that's near enough. Not on there, so this one is actually needs to be moved out. Up, 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 up from primary. So that's my secondary bevel. It's quite good actually. Secondary bevel is quite near on the mark, wasn't it? So I'm going to go up to 28, uh, 26 to 27, 28. Now, if your steel of your plain iron is poor quality, you really can't go too fine on the edge because it just won't stand it. It'll just you just lose the edge too quickly. So you probably have to go down to it, you know, not quite as fine as that. The edge will break. So we're just going to bring it back like so. La 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 la, I'll bring it over there. Alright, so now we can create a sharp, the actual sharp edge now on, on the secondary bevel. I do like to have places to put things. I like, I like to be organised. I'm not generally a very organised person. But the workshop's probably more organised than the office. <laughs> but since I've been really busy with the other channel, I just kind of haven't really paid much attention in here. I'm not doing enough work. Plus, my business, woodworking business, isn't been doing as well. Because of Brexit and what have you, and lost a lot of my customer base. Very helpful. I 
I have to admit, they're doing this kind of thing. It feels far more positive than talking about politics all the time. Especially what's going on at the moment. You know, missiles flying over Ukraine into Poland. That isn't very helpful, is it? That, that looks like possibly the missiles were actually Ukrainian missiles. That well, it might be wrong, but um, so oh, about like that. Um, that are. Well they're, well, they're in the air because they're trying to defend against the Russian missiles and they went astray. Apparently. I don't know if it's true or not. You know, last night when I first heard about it, that was, they were saying that they're Russian missiles and now they're saying Ukrainian, I don't know. Who knows? They might know now, though. Since they've been doing this, I might think the news might have changed. Donald Trump is, is running again for president. Well, that's going to be interesting, I'm sure. Whether I'm keen or not, I don't know. And Jeremy Corbyn apparently is going to run, for, well, it's possible that he's going to be running for mayor, London mayor. So that would be interesting. Or at least he hasn't said he's going to yet, but um, that is a rumour. And there's a lot of um, interest in him doing so. So that would be an interesting one. There we go. Oh yes, it's coming along. But you see they take a lot longer these plain irons because they're so hard. And it would be better with diamond. But I'd have to obviously invest in those. I can't afford it at the moment. Like I so, I just sold the machine. Partly because I wasn't using it and partly because I needed the money. So uh, yeah. That's a spindle moulder. So I'm a spindle moulderless at the moment. No spindle moulder. But I wasn't really using it. I didn't use it for such a long while. Shame, it was a nice machine. Uh, yeah, that's getting there. God, it takes so long, these steel. These steel lines, this hand forged steel. Very good quality. But they hold their edge for ages. So if you're doing a lot of oak work, or even Douglas fir. Now, I've got... A stack of Douglas fir wood here, which happens to, um, it's very old, and in fact, it's wartime Douglas fir. Yeah, what I mean by that is it's um, it came well it salvaged from the roof of a po the post office, the sorting office in London, the main sorting office, and it had basically a, um, a bomb-proof roof. I had these big beams on the roof, all stacked up against each other, so a really thick, solid wooden roof. And uh, it was all in, uh, in very nice Douglas fir. Good quality stuff, this is. It's not like the stuff you get at, the, at, your, at lumber, at the woodyard. No, not at all. It's all pucker stuff. And uh, when you're playing it, you know, these really thin, almost like lace shavings. Look, it's got those little hole, like holes in the shavings, almost like lace. It's amazing. And with a good plain iron like this, you know, it's amazing the actual shavings you can get off and how fine they are. You know, it's incredible. But I say, this, this old timber has been, you know, it's, it's like the wood was old and, and plus it's been seasoned over a long period of time. So it's, um, yeah, it's not forced, it's not uh, kiln dried or anything like that, no. It's been air dried. It might have been st installed green anyway, to be honest. So we're getting close now. As I said, it takes quite a while with these. Now, when I do the finish off the finished final honing, I'll quite often, like I said, I use um, a diamond uh, stone such as this one, or this one here is about four or five thousand, four or six, I can't remember what it is now. Wait, about six thousand or eight thousand grit. It's really fine. Is this one here, which is a water stone. That you do need to use water. Normally, I keep them, you see they hit this natural. Blobs of goo, I need to keep it flat. Um, you usually keep that in water. But not at the moment. Not at the moment. And you see, it's getting, as you see, oh, you probably can see that. The colour of that, that effect is black and grey, you know, so obviously it's the, it's the um, metal filings in the oil. So you see, this one takes a lot longer, a lot, lot longer. But we're nearly there, actually. Looking at that edge, I'm getting more satisfied with that. Oh, definitely. 
Looking good, looking good. La 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 Oh, that's good. We'll move on to the waterstone in a minute. And these all set in a way, the heights of these all set on little blocks. If you Probably sit on little blocks, so the correct height to work all the way down the grits. That one there, you see, is lower than that one, and this one's a little fractionally lower than that one. So, effectively, what you're doing is you're creating, when you get to the final edge, so I'm not trying to create a flat with that, I'm just trying to, or when I get onto this all, a wet water stone here, I'll just be trying to create the edge and not the actual flat of the edge. It's so fine, you see, you don't need, God, man, that's oil's disappearing. I'm going to be making a lot more t-shirt design. I'm uploading some t-shirt designs soon for the woodworking channel. Uh, so for merchandise and what have you. So anything trying to keep the wolf from the door. I feel I feel the back the back of the plane iron now is getting a bit of a burr. We go quick and go slow, good man. Finally got oil in the oil stone. It's exercise. It's supposed to exercise around for ages. There you go. I've seen a few on the, on the political channel, I spend so much time sitting in a chair looking at monitors. You know, <laughs> you tend to uh, water, water, I don't mind water. There you go. So we put water in there. Now I'm going to have to make sure I keep this. Or to make sure I dry that afterwards because I'm using water. And that's the lubricant because it's water on the water stone. Hence, it's a water stone. This is a natural, natural stone. It's not a man made stone, it's literally like a slice of stone. I don't know what type of stone it is, but it's very, very fine. For most people's purposes, I, I recommend diamond every time. And plus, that, yeah, and considering that you can get nice, cheap diamond stones these days, um, if you haven't got anything else to sharpen with, I highly recommend them. Yeah, that's getting nice. Close, starting to shave. <laughs> Remember, we've still got a bit of a, a wire edge on that at the moment. Yeah, there's a wire edge from the actual, uh, yeah, from the sharpening process, like a burr. So we will have to remove that. You can do it in various ways. One way is the palm technique I showed you a minute ago. I can't do it at the moment because I've actually cut myself. So uh, <laughs> if I do that, just make it worse. You can get caught in the, into the uh, cut itself. I don't really want to do it. Right, I'm going to make sure there's no water on it now. Oh, actually not yet. I'm not ready for that yet. Right, there's various ways of removing that burr. One, like I said earlier, is where you, you run up the edge of a piece of wood. Yeah, so you literally do that. That peel the burr off. The other way is to go one way and then on the flat, back like so. You just keep reversing it like so. And you'll effectively bend that burr back or back and forth until it's gone. The other way is using something like this um, <coughs> uh, piece of leather I've got mounted in there. You can even use a piece of wood like this, piece of wood here, you can just use this like so. But I tend to use a bit of leather, so it's got cut and compound in it. Do about 20 strokes with that. And then on the back, on the flat, make sure the full width. So you bend the bird the other way and you carry on. 
don't remember not to push it forwards because obviously what happens is you put a cut into your into your strop. So that's now getting nice and sharp. Back that way. Now all I can't find my cutting paste because it's got cutting paste in this already, it's impregnated with it in this lever. Got over a pair of times folks in you see. But I put the bit of um oily water uh white spirit onto it that lifts the oil out of the uh, piece of leather. Not oil, it lifts the uh, cutting compound out of the leather. Out of the leather, so I'm back again. Every time you do it, you can feel it. You, when you do the first cut, you can feel the burr. It's like, it feels like a scraper almost. So you just bring it back like so. I'm happy with that, that's good. So the same difference again, we'll make sure you've got oil or something on your um, the steel to make sure that it's in everywhere. And I know I'm overkilling, there's a bit of corrosion there, I should have cleaned it off. It's still going actually, to be honest. All I've got to do is do that. Just clean the worst of that off. Do the same on the other side. Make sure I don't cut myself on that sharp edge. Yeah, that's doing it. Push it down just to keep it flat. Like I said, these are the Victor hand forged plane irons, and these are definitely worth the investment. They really are. As you can see there. They're not the standard thicker, so like they're three mil thick steel. Whereas the standard plane irons, I think they're about two mil. But the as you saw, they do take quite a long while to actually get an edge on. I'm quite happy that's got a fairly good edge on there now. And you could do, you know, do put the back um, bevel on it if you wanted to. Yeah, well, I used the uh, ruler, didn't I, on the... Uh, got to be quite careful with this one because the way it works, you can't string it around properly without taking the screw right out. It's quite annoying. So you can accidentally damage the edge. So I get about, what, about one, one and a half mil back from the edge on, for the chip breaker. This is the chip breaker. And what that do, does is it forces the shave and as it comes up, instead of... Um, creating a potential split so the, the plane iron follows the split in the wood it breaks the shaving that's why it's called a chip breaker it breaks that chip and it prevents that plane iron like following into the grain so effectively what it's every time that that chip breaker breaks the chip um, the chip hence the chip yeah, breaks the chip the plane iron isn't being influenced at all so um, that's pretty much what it does if you're wondering probably not <laughs> Right, so now that's in there. I generally you just use the. I know you shouldn't. This is a good quality one, so it should be fairly okay. So just tighten that one there, like so. So now I've got the chip breaker on the plane iron, about a millimetre or so back, millimetre, millimetre and a half back, it's about sixteenth of an inch. And then that could be reinserted into the actual plane body. Now, now I've got this far. When you think about the plane itself, because we're talking about winterizing, you see, and I said, I'm not just sharpening this up, but I'll make sure that when I put that plane back in that cabinet, it ain't going to corrode on me. So, you see on here, there's some places on here, it's got a bit of corrosion, it's got glue on it, even there, it might even be the glue that's caused it. So, um, what I tend to do is, I'll find it, where is it over there? Don't use sandpaper or anything like that. A bit of emery coffee too bad if you've, if you've got some lubricant on it. But I tend to just use a uh, coarse diamond stone like this one because it's plenty bigger than a whole flat, you see. As soon as you use anything sandpaper, you're going to follow, you can create rounds on all these edges. Now there's a bit of corrosion now, I won't get rid of it. So what we're going to do is we'll do pretty much the same what we did with the um, sharpening process and use the diamond stone like so. I'm just going to wrap back and forth and just clean up the faces. And while I'm doing it, the oil is soaking into the metal as well as far as it can anyway. It gives it an added protection. So you can, like I said earlier, use um, a bit of the lacquer to um, create a bit of extra protection. But I'm not keen on that either because what you do is have a period of time while that lacquer goes into all the nooks and crannies and then it's having a job to remove it if you, if you want to. Completely spoil it. So all I'm doing is I'm not trying to sh <laughs> to polish the sides, all I'm doing is removing that rust, that a bit of surface pitting that started on this on this plane iron. Oh, sorry, on this um, Stanley Bailey number seven. This isn't the biggest Stanley Bailey. Um, you can get a number eight as well, which is even longer. 
longer it is, the straighter your, uh, you can make an edge of a piece of wood. Now I know that the uh, most common play that most people have is, would be the, uh, uh, say for instance, a number four, smooth and plain. But it's not actually the plane you should be using. <laughs> There's not really the ideal plane, most people. It just seems very, but I don't pop because it's size, I suppose, but it makes it actually harder. The longer your plane, the easier it is to use to do the job it needs to do. Like you've got to straighten um, the edge of a door or a board or whatever, or put a leading edge on the door even. Well, then it makes a lot more sense to have something longer so you can create a flat edge, a straight edge. Now, some people call this plane, the number seven, a, a jointer. That's very American, to be fair. Um, yeah, we, we call it number seven. Yeah, the number six is a, um, well, you've got a four plane in there. These are, you know, really good um, planes. These are American design anyway, to be fair. You're talking about Frederick Bailey, um, sorry, not Frederick Bailey, uh, Leonard Bailey and um, Frederick Stanley. Now, they were kind of, had put it, um, adversaries, I would say. Frederick, um, Frederick Stanley and uh, Leonard Bailey, they were adversaries. So this was during the time of um, Industrial Revolution, Industrial Revolution and what have you. And um, this design was effectively, eventually bought out by uh, Frederick Stanley. Um, before that, Frederick Stanley was literally buying up companies. As soon as a new plane design was out there, all elements of a plane, like for instance in this case, the lever cap, it's a Bailey design. Um, Stanley Bailey would be out there buying up the paintings for this stuff. And it, it was quite ruthless. Now Stanley Bailey, Stanley Bailey, Frederick Bailey, he'd uh, started out as his company, I've got something like ironworks, so basically used to make uh, um, door furniture, things like hinges and handles and, and shoot bolts and stuff like that. That's what he started out making, and then he went into tools. Unfortunately, Stanley is not really Stanley, more Stanley Black and Decker. They're not the same company, and they're not the same quality tools, by no means. And most of their stuff is just imported from China. It really has gone downhill. Yeah, a lot of people, they're, they're good enough, but um, I have to admit, like I said earlier, the hand planes, the Stanley hand planes, um, are much lighter than this, much lighter. You, you, you have to do a lot of work with them when you first get them, because the bottom, the, the sole will not be flat. There'll be a lot of hollowing around the actual um, throat, which is literally the slot where the blade comes out of. Yeah. It's just poor. There's just no comparison to these older tools. And they don't take a lot to tidy up. You might be lucky to get one in good condition if you find one at a car boot or something like that. It's only got a little bit of surface rust on it. You need to clean that off. You know? They're just nicer. I've got no, yeah, even like, for instance, my uh, number four. This is not all number four. I know it's a bit, a bit dirty at the moment, but this is number four, Stanley. This is the most common plane. And I do use this a lot, hence it's, yeah, and it's been used on site and that as well, had a lot of years. And that's the Stanley Bay number four. Yeah, again, you know, they're made to last. They really are. So I was basically just removing, I'm not trying to make them pretty or shiny or anything like that, I just want to remove the rust. And I've already applied the oil, so I don't need to add any more oil. Okay, so that's good. I'm happy with that. All right, but... It's not just that though, it's all these areas in here. They all get gunked up after a while with um, resins and bits of wood and stuff like that. It's been around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I want to clean all these bits. I could remove everything, this, this part's called the frog. The reason for that is that it looks like a frog's face. It's called a frog, yeah? And that creates your first angle. But that is removable and it's easy to put back in because there's actually an adjustment screw in the back here. Um, right in the back here there's an adjustment screw. If you leave that alone, when you remove these two screws here and you put the frog back in, it will go back in exactly where it's... I'll tell you what, I'll show you. That's the easiest way. What you do this, make sure you've got a nice big screwdriver. Don't use any tiny screwdrivers. What you do is you'll damage the screws. So I'm going to remove these two screws out of the frog. There's one. Give the opportunity actually to oil the screws, don't I? And there's the other one. 
and that is the frog it's about to come out that is your frog and that's the adjustment i was talking about as long as you don't move the screw that screw there the frog ain't going in the right place yeah you can work it out for yourself anyway when you put it back if you want to now there's a lot of grinding nasty stuff in there so all i'm going to do is use a little bit of this oil i'm going to just have to wash it about in there loosen that up and then wipe it out and then at the same time i'm then lubricating all the little threads and stuff like that and prevent it from rusting as well at the same time it just makes sense i'll do the same all the way along if you think you've got to be wary of you need to make sure you, you don't use a load of like thick oil because what happens is next time you pick the tool up and you want to use it on a piece of work um you're going to find that you're going to put a lot of that residue onto your workpiece you know, from the oil so i've got these two screws here we'll be used put back in a moment well i'll explain something to you now if you've got a loose handle it's, it's called a tote all right you might call it a handle but it's called a tote now the tote can become loose so if you've got a plane that's got a wobbly tote <laughs> so if you've got a wobbly tote there's a there's a little trick you can do to you know to correct that because what happens is the grains going this way on the tote as it shrinks it becomes shorter over a period of time so if you've got, uh, you buy a new tool, then maybe, I don't know, a couple of years later, if the handle's got a bit loose, you try and tighten it up, and you tighten it and tighten it, and it will go tighter. No. Because you're already at the limits of the thread. Because this is the captive nut on the top here, which I'll probably show you. I'm not going to force it. No, that's coming out, that's right. It's got a captive nut. So if you remove that captive nut, it's brass, right, obviously the f that screw is only going to go so far in, the screw that holds the handle on. So what you do is you just grind a little tiny bit say oh maybe a millimeter off the end of that screw maybe two millimeters if you have to as long as you're not too far and damage um it's actual um it's left it's too short and then you can't screw the handle back on you got to make the handle short for the work uh you'll be absolutely fine there's another screw at the base here as well to remove i'll tell you what I'll just, you know what i've done it's in the first place i'll just remove it so i'll just show you yeah so moving this screw here so be careful with your hand though you find you've got a loose handle don't be tempted oh just crank that screw down really tight because you might find them will do, do absolutely deadly squat yeah um the other thing you can do is put another wash on top of the actual threaded um section because this has got a thread on both ends yeah don't break that because you'll find you'll probably have to get another one or get one made because um if you can if you can find these online you might be able to um the reason why i say that is they're not standard thread so you've got to get the right thread that's going to go into the body. I'm not sure what thread's BSP or something stupid like that. Or, um, so there's a little handle that I made to fit my hands, because I thought, you know, I like a good handle, you see. So, yeah, so that's what I made to fit my chain to the handles on this thing. This opportunity, actually, you can give a bit of clean-up and have you, make sure when you put it back on, it's all neat and tidy and protected. Now, you can use a bit of oil if you want. Anyway, we'll slide it back on there like so. But like I say, you, this, this hair was just threaded. It's threaded on both ends. And that screws up all the bits now, isn't it? So that's threaded in both ends, yeah? It's a bit of an unusual thread rate. So um, you screw it into the base like so. And if you've got to shorten that because the handle has shrunk, you can do that. Just touch it onto the side of an angle grinder or a um, bench grinder. And anyway, let me slide that back on there like so. I love this plane. I use it so much. I feel, I feel quite naughty that I've allowed it to get a bit deteriorated. And let me put that screw in there like so. Don't tighten up at this stage. You'll get the other screw in first before you tighten all your screws up. Dee 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 dee. I'll screw that in there like so. So I'm not very active on the on the chat. But I've got to get things done as well, you see. So I will be on chat and saying. So what, you, what you're saying. So tighten up. Not too tight because it's brass on steel. So if you do it, you're going to damage it. But make sure you've got a nice big screwdriver. Um, otherwise, you're going to damage the, the slot. You don't want to do either. So that's back on, it's not wobbly, I'm quite happy at that, it's nice and solid. And now we've got the, the frog, as you can see, it's got all this build up of dust and what have you, because it's a tool and that's what it's used for. Yeah, doing tool type stuff. But before I put that back in, I'm going to clean all that off. You can use an airline and all these bits and pieces. There's CBT on there, I don't know why that is. That's probably something you ever had before me. Right, so, like so, clean all that out there, like so. So I'm lubricating at the same time with a bit of oil and de -de -de -de, making sure all the threads have oil on. Well, there's a mixture of components, some are brass, some are steel. So just trying to make sure. Like I said, I'm not trying to make it pretty. I'm not into all that big tool tartary. No. 
I want the tool to work and I want to keep working, hence you look after it, even though I didn't. Otherwise I won't be doing this. Well, there's gonna, I haven't been doing much work in here. And that's going to change, I'm going to make sure of it. I need to oh, do more videos, what have you, in the woodwork inside. Right. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Right, thread on there, look so. If Mad Monk is still here, um, mention about these clips and stuff regarding Scotland. I want to do it, I mentioned the other day. I've been so busy, a little bit had put it, my head's been at my bottom to be honest. Trying to keep my head around, so I'm trying to do the website at the moment as well. Try to get that ready for the, you know, I don't want Mr. Boat for Christmas regarding t shirts, designs, and stuff like that for the, both channels. So I've been really, really busy. And it means the other channel hasn't been doing that well. Um, you know, um, I have to live, you see, so <laughs> we have bills to pay. Although not, they're not horrendous. So I'm putting the fro frog back in, and um, thank God they're not horrendous bills, to be fair. Look what's going on in the UK at the moment, oh my god, God's not that big and um... Oh, what's that, the uh, budget tomorrow, oh my god. Not looking forward to that. But anyway, let's thread, tighten them up in there like so. Is it tomorrow or Thursday? Thursday, isn't it? I don't know what today is. Day Tuesday. <laughs> I can't think what today is. Or was it Wednesday already? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so it cleans up in there like so. Uh, dee -dee -dee. So it's not excessive amount of oil. I've got my chip breaker, so there's a, a bit of sprung steel in there. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to grab this brush and make sure I clean up all the dust from behind there. Lubricate at the same time. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee -dee -dee. That's just what I do. You know, you might you might like doing it a different way. This is just how I, you know. Do it. I'll use a brush. Some people just oh, what? But the problem is, if you just use an oily rag, oh, just wipe it with an oily rag. All these bits that are low it won't get any oil in them. They'll just be dry, wouldn't they? So they're not gonna get, they won't get, not, they won't be protected from the damp. So just make sure we've got to make sure I've got oil on there. I don't want to rust. All right. So I'm gonna place the plain iron and chip break assembly back into the plane like so. I'm not worrying about how. Um, where the actual iron is set at the moment because I'm not actually using the plane iron uh, as in it's not actually been used used bit of grime there, get that off there nice, really nice tool this is it's done a lot of work in this time right, let me place it on there like so making sure that screw is in the right position I, I, don't, I don't think I've moved it and you can see here, you can see the skew oh there goes the light um, Basically moves the plane iron so it skews the blade one way or the other. So everything moves nice and smooth and and free. I'll, I'll be in the chat in a minute, so let's bring on that. So, so that is my number seven. So people call it Stanley Jointer hand plane. And it is a lovely, lovely, lovely tool. It really is. It's an old tool. I know some look prettier than this. Oh, I know like the Lee Nelsons and stuff like that. And uh, oh the Veritas and Various other makes out there, very pretty tools that they are too, but this is a tool to do a job. And it'll do exactly the same job as a Veritas or a Lee Nelson. And I would argue it's probably better. End of the day, how old is this flipping thing? I don't even know what model it is. It's got to have a number. Actually, if you want to find out, you can actually find out it's um there'll be a number down, usually near the frog. I can't see it at the moment, but there'll be a number, and from that number you can work out the year of the actual plane. You know, there's some real fanatics about this stuff, see. So back into the older uh, rack it goes. So there it goes. Oh, actually one thing about it. Let's put you back there for a second. That goes in there like that. So you see the state that one, that one is doing the better comparison between those two there. Well, say, you can't see it, this is the thing. Yeah, so it's back into the rack there. If you look at this number six, this four plane here. That one. You see the state that's in? That's the original paint mine. I haven't painted this one at all. That one's been painted up. Um, I did put these to new tote and handles and stuff on it, it's been machined up as well. And also it's got no thick to plain irons. Now if you, if you probably see it from down there, can you see it from down there? Let me show you. No, you can't. So let's just bring it back up there. So if you look here, that plain iron, the thickness of that plain iron there, and compare it to that, say that one or that one, needle like two more thick and these are three millimeters thick. So they're considerably um, thicker plain irons, they really are. So anyway, let's go back onto the bench because this there's other ways you can protect these tools, and one way is using tool wax. 
And I say tool wax, any wax will do. Yeah. Because you can use this stuff here, this is Liberon. You heard of Liberon wax, but this is Liberon tool wax. So it's basically just wax, really. Well, seems to be. I won't use it for furniture, though. No. But it works, and it protects your tools. But yet again, you've got the same problem with all this stuff because it's not liquid necessarily, it's not going to go into all the crayon. So when you've got a low, you, you've got nothing there to actually, you know, to get it into the holes. Whereas if you use oil, I know some people don't like using oil, I get that. But if you use an oil, you're more likely to, get, to make sure the whole thing is you know, well protected. Anyway, let's bring that down a bit over here. I'm going to plonk my tool here. I don't know why it's vertical, that's weird. Don't usually do that. <laughs> Maybe it's a YouTube problem. Oh, oh you're gonna plonk my bum down. Oh. Right, microphone. Come in number five. Right, what was that number seven? Oh, it was number seven, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't. A wobbly tote. You can have a wobbly tote. No. The treatment for that, I'll get a tablet. No? Let's put that over the way before I get oil on myself. Put that on top of the oil stone. Dee 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 dee. Hello, Casper. I think it's Wednesday. Oh, is it Wednesday, is it? Let's have a look up the top there. Is it Wednesday? Oh, I think you might be right. A captive nut. <laughs> oh, various ways you can take that, Gingers. A wobbly tote. Yeah, they're all thin. They're actually, You've got a point, actually. They're all quite funny names, aren't they, really? You've got a wobbly tote, captive nut. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't watched Bo. Oh, Bo? Who's Bo? Uh, Bo calmed me down a bit. I hope USA is truly over. I hope USA is truly over. Probably, oh, I don't know. Simon says... How do you mean that truly over? You've got, you've got, you've got Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, God's sake. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> oh, God, I'm all blooming. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. Why oh, is it? I can't get rid of it. Oh, no, it won't let me. Have I done it already? Might have done it already. It's not letting me do it. It looks like I've got a dodgy message there which doesn't want to oh it does report probably my dodgy screen protector another one god they're so annoying report on that okay and that report uh well i'm going live tonight again on this on my other channel and then i'm going to be going over to um the snowflake show with uh, Lee Corn, because Reagan, he's off to my, um, today, so um, I'm filling in just to help them out, so they can carry on stream, I suppose. So you, you've got me to put up with tonight as well, twice. <laughs> oh dear. Lee will be leaving the show though, so. Yeah, swing low, good move, says Bernard. Yeah, maybe maybe um, Simon says 55 about the views and what have you. But I don't know, it's just, it's hard these days to get this, because obviously the competition side, there's a lot of people out there doing it, um, whether they be doing what I'm doing here at the moment, or whether it's the other channel. There's a lot of people doing it, and a lot of people do it better than I do, you know, so, there you go. You know, you're not going to be great at everything, are you? Yeah, this one here, this is a, um, old braids, car steel chisel, this one here, this old, uh, firma chisel. Now, Regarding firma chisels, this is a firma chisel where you've got a square edge, yeah? So it's just like a flat piece of bar, really, you know, with a sharpened edge on the end. In this case, it's a cast steel. So it's actually a good quality chisel, but it's not beveled edge. Now, beveled edge chisel will be one like the one I sharpened earlier, such as one. I want to show you something. Because the reason I want to show you something is the purpose of a beveled edge chisel is so you can get to the edge of, say, for instance, a dovetail joint. Have I got one hit a dovetail, like a mock up dovetail, I can show you what I mean. I did have one round here. I can't see it. Oh, anyway, um, you know what a dovetail joint is? Basically, it's a, it's a joint shaped like that. <laughs> so, um, and the point, problem is you've got a joint shaped like that. <laughs> when you've got a square edge chisel, you want to get into that edge of your dovetail joint. Um, 
You can't because you'll bruise all the edges of your dovetail because it's square. So you use a bevel edge chisel. Now the problem with a lot of um, so-called bevel edge chisels, they're not really to, um, actual bevel edge chisels. Now this one, well, there's another chisel that needs um, sorting out. And this is a Stanley 5002. It's quite an old chisel. It's got, that, it's got, it's got the impact handle on it. But if you look at that bevel on there, these edges are very thin at that point. Same as this chisel here, this old one that we sharpened a minute ago, the one I cut myself on. Um, those edges that bevel are quite thin. So when you get the actual dovetails <laughs> like that, and you're trying to get in there, you're less likely to bruise the edge, because it's thinner, the edge of the old dovetail. But if you use something like that, you are likely to, as it's a firmer chisel, it's not a bevel edge chisel. Um, but if you use... Just to show you what I mean. Is that a good example? Is that a good example? Hey, that's a good example. Another one and a bit rusty, but um, if you look at this chisel here, this is supposed to be a bevel edge chisel. It looks like a bevel edge chisel, doesn't it? And it, and they call it a bevel edge chisel, but I would not call it. I wouldn't consider this as a bevel edge chisel. And the reason for that is because these edges here are too thick. So if you f compare that to like that bevel edge chisel, even though this is a much wider chisel, there's no, <laughs> it's just chalk and cheese. That is so much thicker and that's, you might as well, if you're going to have that chisel, you might as well use a firmer chisel like this one because the edges here are too thick. Yeah, that point there. So no, it's not that, a bit pointless. Now, if it's a good chisel, in the sense of it's the steel and what have you, if it's a really good chisel, I might be tempted to regrind it up into a proper bevel edge chisel. Like one of these. Now, although this is a Stanley uh, 5002, like I say, it's probably from the 70s, this chisel. Um, remember right, I think this one actually was my old man's. It was my father's chisel, this was. And, um, uh, yeah, so the edge here is much, much thinner. But the more modern versions of these, they're thick again. On these, on the Stanley 5002, because they're not really Stanley 5002 chisels. No, uh, most of them are made in China. Now, not because everything in China is bad, because it's not. It's just that the, obviously the model that they've shown in China, or they've decided to have made in China, is a, is a really bad design. So their prototypes aren't very good, are they? Or maybe it is the pro, or is it the manufacturing in China? Uh, Unpopular with sexy spams. It appears to be the case, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are a pain in the butt. Oh, not like that, no. Oh, okay. What time, Marcus? What, uh, oh, what time? Well, I'll be... I'm going to go live at half past seven English time. So that was GMT... Uh, yeah, Greenwich Mean Time. Is, is it Greenwich Mean Time now? Or is it a bit summer time? It's Greenwich Mean Time, isn't it? Um, and then I'm going to be getting going... Live again at nine o'clock, but on the um, Snowflake show with uh, Lee Corn. But if my <laughs> this is it's an experiment, okay? It's an experiment. If my actual um, internet can cope with it, I've checked it today, and it seems quite quick today. What I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to sign out of my live stream, the half past seven stream UK time. I'm going to keep it running, but I'm going to put, I'm going to basically stream as a page through my stream, the Snowflake show. So effectively what's going to happen is I'm going to upload my video of me to Lee Corn of um, the Snowflake show. At the same time, I'm going to be uploading my stream, but also I'm going to be downloading... <laughs> Lee Corn stream. I'm up, oh God's sake! Yeah, <laughs> it's about four times I think up and down. I checked my upload speed's pretty quick at the moment, so hopefully it will work. If it doesn't, I might have to suddenly just say, oh, "I'm just gonna have to shut the stream and ta-ta everybody." But you know, join us at um, what's that uh, thingy stream? So if it works, it'll be quite interesting. The fact that we have two streams running at the same time, it'll be a double whammy. I'll be dual streaming. I will. I'll be the right old pair of streams. Don't cross the streams. Don't cross the streams. Don't do it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it might work if it doesn't like i say i'll just have to click off mine and carry on with um lee but it might do see what happens so that might, uh, the other stream might run on a bit longer so <laughs> see if it works <laughs> so uh, 
technically it should work, but in practice it might not. Didn't really understand, but I'll be there. <laughs> I've got two streams running at the same time, so I'll, I'll be running my snowflake sh the, the uh, Lee Corn Snowflake show through my show after my show. So my show won't necessarily end, it'll carry on. <laughs> so instead of being like, for instance, half past seven to nine o'clock, it might run for another hour, so after, another hour after that. But it'll be Lee Corn's show. <laughs> I assume, otherwise, if people go over to Lee Corn, obviously they, they need more viewers, you see. So I thought it might be a good, nice way because people are coming and going, you see. Or I could say, oh, everyone at the end, go to Lee Corn's show and just move it, try and get everyone to go over there in the Snowflake show. But it might not necessarily work because. With my show, I know it's, I get different people coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. So those people who might be coming and going might not know, if it makes any sense. Work. Ah, right, okay, goes Casper. Well, that was time now, anyway. I oh, only two hours now. My phone is literally about is going to die any moment. So I will be um, signing off in a minute anyway, because I need to get ready for my show tonight. Um... Yeah, you know, on the All Shorts channel. And uh, I haven't actually worked out what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> Thought we'd spend several hours beforehand preparing the, preparing the show, you know. But I haven't. So it might be interesting. <laughs> well, I'll need sharpening as well. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Um, thank you for joining us here. Um, I know it's just a bit of an ad hoc kind of, um, yeah, stream, but... Yeah, anyway, that's what I do with my chisels and my planes and what have you regarding getting them ready for the winter. And I need a bit of a remedial work as well, as you saw, because I've neglected my tools. Don't neglect your tools. Make sure you lubricate your tool. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. And I'm going to say ta-ta. I can't even find the button. Now. Oh, and why is it the wrong way up? That is weird. Oh, dear. Never mind. Ta-ta.